so it has been a very, very, very interesting week in terms of politics. And they are right that a week is a long time in politics. We started this week with, um, obviously, the, the threat of, of Boris Johnson giving a new uh, deadline of um, early October that he wanted the talks to be done and over or else Britain would just walk away, even though the European deadline is at the end of October itself. So it's just like, let's face it, if you probably haven't got a real de deal, deal agreed by then, it's probably not going to happen. But as we discussed at that time, this just plays into the whole Brexiteer fantasy of um, the EU is the master of the last minute deal, that it'll be fine, we can just wait and then we'll just, you know, do one at the last minute. However, as we discussed before, that's not true. It's not true when you look at the history of the EU doing its deals and how open it is about doing its deals. We know exactly what goes on in negotiations. So we do see how they start off in negotiations and where they end up. So we see, we've see we seen that whole gambit and rift of the EU negotiating. Now, you don't see that for a lot of other countries, especially the ones outside the EU, because all the negotiations are carried out behind closed doors. So you never actually really know what's happened in those trade negotiations unless one of the people comes out and says, this is what's happened, or the notes get leaked or whatever, because it's they're all done behind closed doors. So we've had that to begin with the week. We then had Britain deciding that it was going to break international law uh, because, well, it felt like it, 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 it just wanted to, really. <laughs> and then we've come through to the, the other... Well, that was Tuesday. And then Wednesday, um, yesterday at the time I'm doing this, so there could have been further updates from this, um, the bill gets released. And, yeah... Um, Britain now wants to break international law by reneging on the uh, withdrawal agreement. Um, you know, um, once again, this and whole cycle of, of Brexit just keeps on getting worse and worse and worse. And I have said that there is bubbles, rumours, shall we say, of, of the backbenchers uh, especially the new Northern Conservative MPs who were in, who were voted in on what were very, uh, what are still very strong Labour heartlands, and they're worried because they know that the government's own report directly suggests that a No Deal Brexit will adversely affect their areas far more than anywhere else in the country. Not only that, you have the coronavirus recession on top of it, as well as the, those, these are the areas that are also suffering the biggest proportional loss of right and of loss of jobs and rise in unemployment throughout the country. So that coupled on top of that is going to be very, very, you know, very hard for them to try and spin that they've actually done a good job. And remember, most of these guys stood on the idea of that Boris Johnson had a oven-ready Brexit deal and that this deal was going to be good for the country. Now, how can they go back at the next general election? Who knows when the next one will be? Um, you know, <laughs> we don't know, but hopefully it will be in 2024, 5, I think it will be. So, um you know, it will be very hard for them to go back to the constituents and try and justify that the Conservatives have sort of done a good job. It's absolutely not. They are going to get absolutely savaged from, quite frankly, stem, stem to tail. And one of the things we, we've said is that, you know, prepare for more austerity. These uh, country, the these towns and, you know, you know seats have been ravaged by austerity for the past 15 years. In fact, the main reason why uh, a lot of the working class voted for um, 
the, the Brexit in the first place was because they were told that their lives were going to become better somehow. And that, you know, it was, quote, the, this would bring about the end of austerity faster. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> um, so this just comes from bad to worse. However, however, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, of all people, who is leading this rebellion? Who is the champion of these Tories? Who is riding forth to, to slay the evil Boris beast? Lo and behold, it's Theresa May. <laughs> of all the people leading this Tory rebellion, the last person I would have suspected to be the leader of this rebellion was Theresa May. But who knows? Maybe Theresa is going to be having the one having her revenge on Boris Johnson very soon. So, uh, we'll get into the get into the article then. So this is from iNews and it's Brexit talks latest. Theresa May leads Tory rebellion over moves to dilute the withdrawal agreement. Theresa May is leading a conservative rebellion against a move by Boris Johnson to override parts of his EU withdrawal agreement. The former Prime Minister warned the move would damage Britain, Britain's reputation on the world stage uh, as, she, as she was joined by a succession of senior Tories in condemning the plan. The row, at the scene, uh, 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 the row set the scene for a showdown between Mr Johnson and Tory MPs over his plans uh, to roll back to roll back parts of the treaty signed with Brussels. Mr Johnson uh, has had difficulty in justifying the change to the withdrawal agreement and it's deepened uh, when the Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis con uh, uh, concerned, uh, uh, commented in the Commons that the move would breach international law in a very specific and limited way. In, further, in a further dent to the government's credibility, the head of its legal department, Jonathan Jones, resign in apparent protest over Johnson's strategy. So the fact that you have a legal head of the government resigning over this, in fact, the government's top lawyer resigning over this, just shows how bad they think it's going to be because he doesn't want any part of this. He doesn't want any part of this at all. The Tory backlash came... As Michel Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, arrived in London for a fresh attempt to break the deadlock in negotiations over a post-Brexit trade deal between Britain and the bloc. Mr Johnson has faced widespread condemnation over his proposals to dilute parts of the withdrawal agreement uh, relating to Northern Ireland in the event of the talks collapsing. The government insists that it is simply clarifying the treaty to minimise uh, tra uh, tra uh, tra uh, uh, trading checks between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom in the absence of a deal with Brussels. But Sir Bob Neill, the chairman of the Commons Justice Committee, uh, retorted uh, that the adherence to the rule of law was not, neg was not negotiable. He said that any breach or potential breach of the international legal obligations we have entered into is unacceptable, regardless of whether it is in a specific or limited way. And in a very rare intervention, Mrs May condemned her successor's strategy, telling the Commons that ministers were trying to alter the agreement which the government had signed up to and Parliament had passed into UK law. She asked... Given now, that how can the government uh, reassure future international partners that the UK can be trusted to abide by the legal obligations of the agreements it signs? Tobias Elwood, the former Foreign Office Minister, said that Britain's respected voice on the international stage comes from its resolve to defend and uphold international laws. He said that this principle must not change after Brexit or the UK's ability to hold nations such as China, Russia and Iran to account would be severely weakened. The fresh round of talks between Mr Barnier and his British counterpart, uh, Lord Frost, will, con uh, will focus on two critical sticking points. First, for state aid and the European trawlers' access to UK waters after Brexit. Time is short and with mid-October deadline uh, uh, to try and reach for the agreement. So, 
this is a, you know, absolutely, <laughs> generally quite shocking, but, you know, who knew? <laughs> Theresa May, um, you know, coming out against Strong, against uh, her party. Now, only, only if she'd had the backbone to stand up against these people when she was actually Prime Minister. Um, we would absolutely be probably heading towards a heck of a lot of a softer Brexit. Um, still not what I would prefer, but at least would have a lot closer ties to the European Union and it wouldn't be as economically damaging as the one that Boris Johnson is, is currently trying to propose and push through. But there you go. And remember, it was Boris Johnson himself and other prominent leavers who were only saying four years ago that we could stay in the customs market and that no one was talking about leaving the customs union or even the single market. So, you know, Brexit, leave just means we can shift the goalposts to whatever the hell we like. You know, as, as of always, there was no plan, so they can do whatever the hell they want and just use the excuse of its, quote, the will of the people. Of course, as we said before, if you got five or even ten levers, you wouldn't be able to find a consensus on what they actually wanted at all. But, anyway, that's that. So... Please do like and share this video, it does help out the channel a lot. And if you are new to this channel, please do hit that subscribe button. We talk a lot about British politics and of course Brexit, because at the moment you can't talk about one without the other. And of course, if you would like to support the channel in another way, we do have links down below to my Patreon page, as well as a link to a one-off donation link. So, with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.